Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you five different layout ideas for your weekly spreads. This is going to be great for those of you who are new to bullet journaling and just looking for some ideas, but also great for those of you who are just wanting to switch it up a little bit. So let's get started. For this first layout, I'm starting off with a little mini calendar in the corner, which I often do in my weekly layouts. And then I'm going to be creating these wide horizontal boxes. So I'm doing four on the left side and three on the right side. You can also just do three boxes on each side if you want to combine Saturday and Sunday into one box. I know that some people like to combine their weekends together like that if you don't have a lot going on. But I like to do seven boxes because you end up with this empty space on one side of your spread and I like to use that space to write down all of my tasks for the week and also my meals for meal planning. You can see here that I'm using a marker to create some colorful drop shadows on my boxes and also for a part of the dates. I like to do this on my weekly spreads. I like to bring in one color just to add some interest to my spreads but I do like to just stick to one color. I think this gives it a more cohesive look. And then you also have a bunch of space up on top. So I just filled it in with some decorative elements. So I added a quote that I lettered really quickly and also some wildflower illustrations. These wildflower illustrations are what I'm using throughout my whole month of April. And if you missed my April plan with me video, I'll link it up for you here so that you can see how I created my cover page with this wildflower theme. And I also have a free printable in that video as well. My next layout is going to be pretty similar to the first one in structure, but I'm actually simplifying it even more so that if you're in a little bit of a rush, you can just use this option instead. Or if you don't want to include as much illustration, this would also be a good one. So again, I'm starting off with the mini calendar in the corner. And then for each day of the week, I'm just quickly lettering that. Um, I did it in a really quick, easy brush script because that's fast for me, but you can also stick to just a more normal font if you want. Then in that extra space on the right page, I created two large boxes. Again, for me, this is gonna be for my tasks and my meals, but for you can be any section you need, like maybe an exercise tracker or an assignment or event tracker. And then at the top, I am filling it in with some washi tape. This is another really easy swap out from the last spread. So instead of illustrations, if you don't feel like doing it that week, or um, if you just want something a little easier, you can just fill it in with washi tape and just makes your page a lot prettier really easily. Then I'm taking a colored marker and I'm creating these wide strokes to separate my days of the week. And this is really quick and easy to do, but it just creates a nice visual border and adds some color to your pages without a lot of effort. Now for the next spread, we're going to go the complete opposite way from these really wide horizontal boxes we created in the first two spreads and make really tall and skinny boxes. And the thing with these boxes is since the pages are not as wide as they are tall, um, I like to make sure that my lines don't have that extra space in between. So instead of drawing each box separately, I drew one big box on each side of the page and then just used one line to split them into the three or four boxes. In my journal, each of these columns ended up being six and a half boxes wide. And those extra boxes that you save by not keeping these columns separate actually makes a huge difference in the end. Um, and you'll notice that in the corner of this one, instead of creating a mini monthly calendar, I just wrote the date range, which is just quicker and easier. At the top, I'm just adding a quick little quote and adding some different colors to make it a little more colorful. And on the right side, I have a little space and again, I'm just filling that in with some wildflower illustrations, which goes along with my April theme, but if you have some other kind of illustration or washi tape you wanna put there, um, just go ahead and put whatever you want. And then I also have a box at the top that's for my to-do list. All right, so I actually messed up the next spread. So I'm showing you the layout of the weekly spreads that I did in February. 
And for this one, we're going to do more squarish shapes instead of these really long rectangle shapes. I think this is my favorite layout of um, boxes and type of box shape because for me, I write things in bullets and in check marks for my to-do list. So this is just a good dimension for me. What's special about this spread is I actually included a mini habit tracker at the top of the right page. So I just picked five habits that I wanted to cultivate and keep track of. And this will be perfect for those of you who are like me and don't actually like habit trackers. So this is just something um, that helps you to pick a few things that are important to you without getting overwhelmed with um, like 50 different things. And for February, I had my moon and stars theme, so that's the type of illustration that I'm filling in the empty spaces for that with. If you want to see that theme, I'll link that up in the corner as well. Alright, so moving on to the last spread, I wanted to do something in a completely different style that I, I normally use and kind of create this collage theme. And this is for those of you who don't really like rigid boxes and kind of want to get more creative and artsy with this. So what I started off with was a bunch of different elements to layers. So I have some photos that I just printed on my computer. Um, I grabbed things from Pinterest and from Instagram, just things that I really liked the aesthetic of or that inspired me. In addition to those photos, I also have some washi tape and I pulled out some tracing paper. I just crumpled it up in my hand to give it some texture. Um, you can also use parchment paper or wax paper if you don't have tracing paper. And I pulled out an old book that has those like yellowed pages that you only get from super old books and I just ripped out some pieces of that. Basically just pull out lots of different elements that you can layer, try to get things that have a little bit of texture, either like actual physical texture like I have with the tracing paper or just visual texture. So like having a photo is a very different look than ha having a sheet of text. So I kind of just wanted to get a nice variation of all of these things. So now I'm just playing around and layering my pieces. This brings me back to my scrapbooking days of just playing around and moving things and layering them. And this process of moving things around is just really fun and helps you to just feel a lot more creative with your journal rather than just drawing boxes all the time. But this is just something that's a little different and has a completely different look to give your journal some variety. So now I'm getting started adhering things down in my journal. For some of these things, I'm taping them down with my washi tape since I'm going to be using the washi tape as an element anyway. And I'm also and I also used some double-sided tape to tape most of those things down as well. Just to make sure that they're actually stuck there really nice and won't fall out later on. And then I'm just writing in the days of the week. You'll see that I'm just scattering them in wherever they fit. With this type of layout, things don't have to be completely in a row and straight and that's kind of what makes it fun. So obviously, since you have a lot more elements on this spread, this would be great for those of you who don't normally have a lot to write on your weekly spreads. Or if you want to do this type of spread and you still need a lot of space for things, then you might want to break this up into um, half a week for each spread like this, just so you have enough space to actually write things down. All right, so that's it for my five different types of weekly spreads. Here's a quick flip through just so that you can see all of them one after each other. And I know this video is kind of quick, so if you just want to look at photos of each of these spreads, um, I'll leave a link in the description box to my blog post, and that way you can look at all the photos all at once. All right, so that is it from me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel for more videos like this, and I will see you guys again next time.